Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Tradewinds RV Center. Here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Torque 333 toy hauler. I'm here to walk you through the unit, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's first talk about arriving at the campsite. One thing I want you to take note of is where your water and electricity are. So your water is about the middle of the unit on the campsite and your electricity is toward the rear of your off campsite just behind your slide so when you arrive take that into note where you want to park so you'll be able to reach your electricity and water I would focus on the electricity make sure that quarter reach and your water I think will come up underneath the unit also take note of where your slide is you want to make sure you're clear of any obstacles, make sure nothing is touching your unit. Any twigs, any branches, make sure you're clear to open this slide. Alright, first thing we're going to want to do after unhooking our hitch, which our hitch man will show you how to do, is level our unit. At the front of your unit here, you have your power tongue jack. This is to raise or lower it. This is a docking light. Simply raise or lower your unit until you're level. doesn't hurt while you first arrive go ahead and check your battery connections a lot of times them will wiggle loose over time and you want to make sure you got good power and good battery connection all right so we've got our unit level front to back using our power tongue jack should you not have power there is a manual override right here at the back this three-quarter inch socket sits on there and that's a raise or lower your unit if you don't have power So we've got our unit all level now. Next thing we're going to do is bring down our stabilizing jacks. Now take note, these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. So you want your unit level first. I highly recommend using jack pads. A lot of times you'll be on hot black top and the hot tire will get up into your jack pads or it'll sink or if you're on the ground it'll sink. So I highly recommend getting some jack pads. You do have a 10% off coupon in our store coming. And uh, I would use that and get a few things. So jack pads. Excuse me, your uh, stabilizing jacks. Extend, retract. Simply hit re extend. to make sure that this leg is down below there. Now you can extend them. One drop down. And the other will come down behind it. Again, only bring these down until you're level. Not level. Bring it to your under your jack pads just until you're taunt. You don't want to lift it, bam. As soon as you feel it's starting to lift the unit, you want to stop. So after you set down your front ones, 
Return to your rear. You also have stabilizing power stabilizing jacks here at the rear. Do the same thing back here. Make sure everything's pushed out, able to come down, and bring down your rear stabilizing jacks. Now we've got our unit stable. We've got our unit level. Now we're gonna hook up our water and electricity. Come around to the off camp side. Now, unit this size, I do recommend shocking the tires as well. We do sell small or large shocks in our store, scissor shocks. Um, highly recommend shocking your tires, just for safety purposes. All right, in your storage will be your power cord. This is a twist and lock. So if you line that silver side up, press it in, turn it, and it's locked. Turn the top there. You're locked in. Now you do have 50 amp. So what you're going to need is this dog bone to reduce it from 50 down to 30. Now should you want to plug it in at home, in your convenience pack is a 110 amperage reducer. Take your 30, reduce it down to 110. Just remember you won't be able to run AC on the 110. We've got our power hooked up. We're going to go back here to the water heater. In your slide is your hot water heater. In your wa hot water heater, you do have a drain plug. Make sure that is plugged. Twist that in there, plug your drain. Once you know your drain is plugged, we're gonna go around and hook up your water hose. Back around to the campsite. Just to the left of your door is your city water connect. Now, the first thing you want to do is hook up your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator reduces it to 40 to 50 PSI. You don't know what the camp is set at, so it's pretty important that you use this every single time, anytime you're putting water in your unit. You don't want to blow your lines out. Your hot water heater plug is closed. Hook up this water pressure regulator. Turn on your water. Once your water's on, feel like it's getting full, we're gonna go back around to the hot water heater. Back around here to your hot water heater is a pressure release valve. Simply pull on this, let the air out, or as they call it, burping it, and water will start coming out here. When water comes out, snap it back, you know that your tank is full and able to be lit. And I can show you how to do that once we get inside. So now you have city water hookup. Let's just imagine for a moment that you're going somewhere and they don't have a city water hookup. You want to take water with you or you want to fill up when you get there at their dump station. Just to the above right of your city water connection is your potable water tank. Simply fill this tank up. This is one time that you won't need your water pressure regulator. Fill your tank up. Again, burp your hot water heater. If you've got water in it, you know that you're full. Now, when using this potable water is when you will use a water pump. I'll explain that when we get inside. We now have city water or potable water. We have electricity. Next thing we're going to want to do is deploy our slides. But before I do, I'm going to walk around the outside of the unit, show you a few things. Spray port, you do have a hose with a spray handle on it to go in there and spray things off. Potable water, vent from inside, black tank flush, which we'll talk about when we're dumping our tanks at the end of the camping. City water connect, cable hookup. 110 with an LCD mounting bracket behind there and has a sticker will peel off if you want it to be. 
Um, so you can mount a TV here, hook it up outside, don't miss the big game. Up above, outdoor speakers, and your big awning, which I'll talk about here shortly. Just to the left of your door is your furnace heat release. This will get really hot, don't touch. Your pass-through storage. In here, I'd like to talk about your battery disconnect. Let's turn on light. So your battery disconnect. Your battery's on, your battery's off. This is really important when you're leaving the camp for the day. You don't wanna run your battery down, especially with your carbon dioxide detector, which I'll discuss. Turn your battery back on. At the front. Your power tongue jack and your battery box. Let's talk about your propane tanks. Of course, lefty loosey to open, righty tighty to close. Regulator pointing toward the tank that you want to use. these back up so I can show you the stove working when I get in. Off to the left, off campsite, your owning generator. Start that up from inside. Down on the corner, solar on the side. If you want to hook up solar to this one day, just simply plug it in there and it'll charge your batteries. Of course, your exhaust for your generator, your fuel for your generator. Your hot water heater again. A vent for your microwave and access to the back of the fridge and freezer. Next to your power cord is your cable and satellite hookup. And your fueling station. Emergency shut off. Where you put the fuel in. Your levels to turn the turn the pump on and off when you've got fuel in it. And this would be your handle for gassing things up. Your ladder, which if you remove these cotter pins, this ladder will pull out and down. A little easier to climb. Two hundred and fifty pound capacity on that. Don't have more than one person on that ladder at a time. Coming around to the back of the unit. It is prepped for a Furion backup camera, which means you can purchase one from our store or anywhere, and it'll electronically communicate between your vehicle and his backup camera. I'll show you how to bring your ramp down here when we get inside. Speaking of that, let's go inside and talk about a few other things. Just as you step in the unit, to your left, is your fire extinguisher. And to your right, is your control panel. Let's start by turning on some lights in here. Lights, 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 lights. Cap lights. All right, so let's start with the control panel. I'm gonna turn these off so you can see a little better. So we do have your tank checks. There's your brand new battery. All of your tanks are empty. These are your slide control and your awning control. So simply press out. Now, I do want you to look around the slide. Make sure nothing is can be caught. This one looks like it's pretty clear. It doesn't have any, any obstructions. So simply hit out. This is gonna run your slide out. And in just a matter of seconds, your slide is out.
Just that simple. So let's talk about a few other things in here. Heat underneath your seat. Underneath your TV, you have your thermostat, which will run your fans, your cool, and your heat. Set, set let the desired temperature. Let's go back over to this control panel real quick. Water pump. Turn this on if you're using potable water. Water heater. If you're hooked up to gas, or electric it looks like on this one, turn that on. Here's your cabin lights, cap light, which is a docking light, porch light, auxiliary lights, all kinds of lights on here. Above that, your Furion, AM, FM, Bluetooth, USB, headphone compatible, dual zone, one and two, which means you can play music indoors or out. Sound system. All right, let's uh, walk around the rest of the unit here, show you a few other things. Let's go to our stove. This glass here makes an excellent backsplash. Yours, you simply turn it to light and hit your lighter. And you're on. Easy enough. Also on the counter, another 110. Self explanatory microwave. Lights and fans for the microwave. Let's talk about your Dometic fridge. So, inside your freezer, at the top, is your controls. Turn it on. Right now you're on an auto. Auto means if you're plugged in, it's running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, it becomes running off gas. Release that. Now you're running strictly off gas. Push it back in and you're back to auto. Shut it off. I do want to mention in your bathroom you have a 110 with GFI protection here. Don't need to fan it on. So you have a 110 with GFI protection. You do have a vent up top. Open your vent. That'll raise the cap. Turn your fan on. And there's your fan. Don't forget to close your vat. You don't want air in there or water in there. All right, coming back out to the living room here. Let's look underneath your dinette. You have a register here for heat. Access to your Control panel, uh, breaker box and fuse box. Looks like you got mostly 15s in there, or 20. I highly recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. You never know when you might pop a fuse. Swinging over to the left. This is your carbon monoxide detector. This is a 12 volt carbon monoxide detector, which means it's running off your battery at all times. So, use your battery disconnect if you're gonna be gone for the day. Keep this from running your battery down, otherwise it'll drain your batteries while you're gone. Let's show you how to set that down in a moment. At the front above your bed is your generator start. Keeps it away from everybody. Nobody can get to it but you. Get the individual lighting here. You have your generator start here and a USB for charging. Your bedroom is also equipped with a roof vent fan and it's also prepped for television. Mounting bracket there, cable and 110 hook up there. 
All right, I'm gonna show you how, real quickly, how to bring down this bench here. I recommend starting, bringing your leg down. No butt pushing down the bottom, release them. Unhook your strap, hold on to it while you do. Lower that down into the legs. You can either lower the front legs, lower the front legs, and have it as a sleeping area, or roll this up into a couch. All right, let's go back here. Talk about your garage. Removable carpet in the garage. Your bunk areas. Another fire extinguisher back here. Another doorway into the bathroom. Also prepped for a TV. TV mount, mounting bracket here. Cable 110. These are your lights. You have your own thermostat back here. That and your bed control. So let's talk about your bed control. As you know, these are benches. Both sides will flip up like that. So what you're going to want to do is roll this forward. Come to your bed control and lift it up. As you see, this will rise up. I'm going to take it all the way to the top. Now once you've raised your bed all the way to the top, it'll click and you'll hear it stop. Go around and remove these four cotter pins. One on each corner. Once you remove them four cotter pins, when you bring your bed down, it's going to bring your top bunk down about halfway and it's going to stop automatically and then it's going to bring your seats down again if you want to bring just your seats down raise it all back up put your cotter pins back in and you're all set tuck these legs away I do want to note you do have venting in here so you press that out you get a little vent in here release that gasoline smell or any other motor smells you may have in your garage there's a huge table which I'm going to lay down flat on the ground for travel that you can set up in between your two benches there so now I'm gonna go outside and show you how to bring this ramp down and set the patio up before I head outdoors I'm gonna extend this on and show you how far to bring it out so you do have a flap there, it's going to drop down to about 90 degrees. Once that flap drops down, you know you've went far enough. Now take note, sometimes those awnings are moist and that flap won't flop right down. Just back it up and go forward a few times. And it'll fall down to where you need it to. And then simply retract it. Alright, so now I'm going to bring down your ramp and set your patio up. Now, if you want to use the ramp, if you do want to use the ramp, simply unhook these and lower it to the ground. Remove a few counter pins. Let your wobble lift. Place cotter pins back in. Okay, if you're on the other 
side. Now your ramp is all set up, your patio is set up. Up above there you do have a, a zippered screen for the area. It's not a screen, it's actually a flap. But you can drop that down and seal this whole area off. Reverse the process to put it away. Now let's talk about leaving the campsite. We brought up our auto leveling jacks. We brought in our slide. I know your unit has slide cover toppers on it. That's great. It's going to help protect the top of that. A little less maintenance for you. So underneath your slide, your slide will be closed. Here's your dump station. In your convenience pack is a sewage hose. Simply hook up your sewage hose, hook this end into their dump tank, and pull your black tank. Pull your black handle. Once you have your black handle pulled, and it looks like it's, or sounds like it's empty, keep your black tank open for a moment and go back over to your campsite. Back over in this area here, we have a tank flush valve. Again, use your water pressure regulator. Hook up the hose to this. It should have water at the uh, dump station. And for about five minutes, flush out your black tank. What that's gonna do is it's gonna run a sprayer inside your black tank and clean it all out. Make sure you leave that black tank open and clean that out for about five minutes. After you've done that, remove your hose and go back over to your dump station. You then close your black tank and pull this gray handle. This gray handle is going to be your gallery water, uh, your sinks, your shower, and that's going to be a cleaner water. It's going to clean your hose out better for you. Once you've got that all emptied, go ahead and close your gray tank and you are all set. Again, thanks for choosing Tradewinds. You guys have picked a beautiful toy hauler. Hope you get the best of this season and many seasons to come. And as we like to say here, happy camping.